So it's not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. Grace is the gift of God. Salvation is the gift of God. Faith is the gift of God. Yeah. And it's not of works. And of course, the, the, the ease with which these guys ignore the different ways that Paul uses works. There are times when Paul uses works in regards to, um, we have been created unto good works in the next verse, yeah. uh, works of righteousness over against either works that mark us off as Jews, mm -hmm. like circumcision, mm -hmm. um, or works done in the flesh. I mean, you can't just assume that every use of the word works has the same reference and the same meaning. You have to look at context. So not of works... So the contrast here, same contrast you have Romans 4, 4 through 5, mm -hmm. the one who works, the one who does not work, the one who does not work, his faith is reckoned as righteousness. Not of works, why? Lest any man should boast. Yep. There is no, there is, if there is any merit, if there is anything in and of ourselves that would differentiate us from others, if it was a system where it's just God makes it available and, hey, you and I were smart enough and sensitive enough and spiritual enough to make it work and... All those poor folks can end up in hell. Mm, what a bummer. They weren't quite as sensitive and smart as we were. Nope. Um, well, we could boast. Yeah. But there's no basis for boasting because, as Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 1, it is by his doing that you are in Christ Jesus who has become to us all these things. Therefore, if anyone's going to boast, let him boast in the Lord. So, beautiful. so not of works, his doing. lest any man should boast. So how do you stop your citation there? And skip verse 10. That's key. How? It is key. Um, I... by the, and by the way, it matches the rest of the chapter, the, the call concept, because he did this in you, because he is doing all this in you. But the one thing I see in these guys preaching is they do not see the importance of following an argument through a text. Yeah. And I... I'm thankful, we were talking about the Stephanus text down there, I'm thankful for Brother Stephanus, Robert Estian, for having inserted the verses in 1551, but, but, I have decried this for a long period of time now, uh, it does tend to break the text up so that we do not follow the flow any longer. Right, right. And so, it, you know, we memorize verses. But whenever you memorize verses, the 100 verse memorization system, yeah. one of the things I did there, you've got to know what comes before, you've got to know what comes after, you've got to know where this was in the flow of argument. Mm -hmm. And so I've met people, how many Mormons have we met that, that can quote James uh, 2.10? It's the first thing uh, they or 2.14 or 2.20, and they don't know anything about 2.10 and 2.14, mm -hmm. or they can, uh, they don't even know, who, they've, I've had Mormons say Paul wrote uh, James, uh, James's words, and they don't have no earthly right. idea what the context is, anything along those lines, any group can do that. Hey, Calvinists can do that absolutely, too. Absolutely, absolutely. Though, that's pretty rare. Let's, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. I've not really run into too many people in that particular, because hopefully exegesis is modeled from the pulpit on that's a regular right. basis in that context. Yeah. But that's a healthy culture to have. It is. Yeah. But I, I could see how in certain ones of these churches, you could not know what was in verse 10. Right. And still be in good standing with everybody else. Mm -hmm. um, and you haven't read it. But if anyone's wondering, maybe you're driving along and you don't have your Bible with you. For we are his thing that has been made. Uh, workmanship is a, that's, that's a strange, I've never really fully understand that. I, I mean, uh, poema is something that you have formed. Uh, it's something you have accomplished. And I, I wish we brought that out more because workmanship, we don't use that term in our language. Right. We really don't. So yeah. it's like, what, what's that supposed to mean? Well, it, it, it means that our interpretation of verses 8 and 9 is continued into verse 10 consistently. That's right. It's not we have partnered together with God to bring about our own salvation. Mm -hmm. We do partner together with God in the ministry of the word, in, in, the, in the proclamation of the gospel. He calls us to do these things. We do that. But when we're talking about ourselves, no, we are his poema. We are his uh, object of work <clears throat> created... And literally in Christ works, but um, I had a I had a conversation once. I don't know if, I don't know if I've ever mentioned to you Dr. J. Niles Puckett. Um, Dr. Puckett 
was one of the, I think one of the founding professors in the 40s of Grand Canyon College. I think you did mention it before, but I, I forget. He studied under A.T. Robertson. Okay. Okay, so it's A.T. Robertson, Jane Alice Puckett, Michael Baird, me. That's my, that's my Greek genealogy oh, nice. uh, as, far as, as far as that goes. So Dr. Baird studied under Dr. Puckett. Now, do Dr. Puckett continued teaching forever there. And so I did, he did fill in for a couple classes I was in. He was a longtime member of the little church that I was, little church, the big church I was at. And one of the greatest compliments ever paid to me was during, after I was teaching an adult Bible study at North Phoenix Baptist Church, and you'd, you'd teach the adult part, and then they'd break up into groups. And so I was done with my part, and I was going to get a drink, and I ran into Dr. Puckett out in this huge, they had three three-story buildings. I mean, it's, I don't know if you've seen the campus oh, yeah. of Beth, and it's, it's massive. huge. Massive. And uh, ran into me, and talk about knowing how to encourage a young guy. He says, uh, he knew who I was. He says, uh, could I ask you a question? No, okay, this is scary. Um, can I ask you a question? Um, he says, uh, in, uh, when Paul in, in Corinthians says that God was in Christ, reconciled, now he was from Mississippi, so yeah. I'm not, not making fun of him. No. This is how he talked. Yeah. Uh, was, uh, God was in Christ, reconciling the world. How do you understand the dative form there? Now, uh, yeah. Did your heart uh, go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, thankfully, uh, it was uh, something that I had given consideration to because the this, it's the same form here, en Christo. Mm -hmm. And literally, en is in, but in the what's called the dative, I learned this as locative instrumental dative. So there's, there's location, mm -hmm. there's instrumentality, and then dative is normally the uh, case of the indirect object. And there's relationships between all of these. And these prepositions are also extremely important. Uh, and I said, well, my understanding would be uh, that this is an instrumental use. And that is, God was by means of Christ reconciling the world. Not that God, What's the Father, was spatially inside. in someone named Jesus. Yeah. Because not only does that lead to Trinitarian issues, right. uh, because it was the Son, not the Father, mm -hmm. uh, that was in Christ. And um, but anyway, uh, but Christ was the means by which this reconciliation was worked. I says, "That's how I understand." It's like, "Yay! I'm so happy. Life is good. I just graduated from college or something, whatever it was." Um, but it's the same. It's the same thing here. I would say, created by means of Christ or, or by Christ. Uh, now you could you could you could use it locatively, I think, in the sense of in the sphere of Christ, sort of like in Ephesians one, maybe because that is you know in Christ, in Christ, in Christ. But since it uses created, and who is who is who is Christ? I mean, I love the emphasis that could be seen here of Christ's personal extension of divine power in the forming of his own body. Yeah. Um, and that means the redemption of each individual person. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's the hymn, my name is written on his hands. Yeah. I mean, that's really where you see a biblical basis for that. So created in Christ Jesus, by Christ Jesus, epi ergois agathois, unto good works. Unto good works. And then the relative pronoun matching that, which... God prepared beforehand for the purpose that we should live in them. And, and that term to walk is just in, in, the, in the original language is often referred to just simply not, not, it's not walking along. It is living in the realm of these good works. God preordained that if you are created by Christ Jesus, not in the sense of creation, but his workmanship, God's entire intention of your life is that you are to dwell in the realm of good deeds. That's his purpose. Yeah. And it's only when you take the focus off of what God's purpose in salvation is and put it on our purposes in salvation. I'm, I'm escaping hellfire. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, uh, I'm trying Jesus and making things work better in my life. Mm -hmm. None of that's the gospel. Mm -hmm. None of that is the gospel. The gospel is about God 
and God's glory and what God has done in Jesus Christ and that Jesus Christ is Lord of all. Mm -hmm. And once you understand all of that, it makes demands upon me. Mm -hmm. I need to bow the knee. And the result is incredible. Mm -hmm. I'm adopted. I'm given forgiveness of sins. I have eternal life. But that we take the stuff that's here and bring it up here to the front yeah. and then get rid of all the rest of that stuff. And yeah. that's what you have in the IFB KJV only movement.